Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again and welcome back to the basic printing series that I am in the process of producing. Last week I uploaded a video, a rather long one, where I discuss how to choose a printer, again what you need to do even before you purchase a printer. If you are into editing your images, your monitor is the most important item in the whole realm of how you go about producing accurate prints in the end. Your monitor has to be able to display the images accurately so your editing makes sense. Otherwise, the editing that you are doing means nothing because it was never being displayed correctly to begin with. So monitor calibration is the number one priority for you guys who are going to be involved whether now or in the future with photographic printing. That means producing prints of your images on paper. I walked you through the standard image. I showed you how to print using basically just the driver. Once you set up your Canon or Epson printer and you have performed all of the preliminary tests that you need to perform, the nozzle check, the head alignment, you will then open up your standard image in file print. Do not ever edit it regardless of what it looks like. And then in your printing module, you're going to choose a corresponding matching paper. You better have Epson paper available for an Epson printer and of course Canon paper available for your Canon printer. You will then load that paper. You will then choose it in the media drop down menu and then in color mode, you will assign ICM, not sRGB, not Epson, sRGB, ICM. What that will do, it will link that Epson or Canon paper to the existing matching ICC profile that was installed when you install your driver. That automatically loads profiles that are included as matching for all your paper choices that are included in the driver media drop down menu. It's simple. You pick ProLuster for a Canon printer, it's going to match it to the ProLuster ICC profile as long as you are choosing ICM as your color mode. Otherwise, no, it's going to sort of guess. All right, and you don't want guessing, you want accuracy. So that is the simplest way to print. That's the way I would like you to begin to print before you start exploring other avenues and other more intricate methods of color managed printing. So you now have your printer, you now have a calibrated monitor, you perform the printing of the standard image and you are satisfied with it. It was not too bright, it was not too dark, it was correctly depicted as far as color balance not too yellow, not too greenish, not too reddish, you know what I mean. And then you matched it to your monitor and it matched. And I think I showed you guys that I did that with that large version of the standard image that I showed you guys in my first video. So now let's talk about the printers themselves. Now you have to realize that you really have to make a choice of what you want to achieve. What is my goal here? Do I want to just print stuff off the internet? Do I want to just print text files, PDFs, whatever? Things that are not really that photographic to begin with. So if that is the case, you're watching the wrong series. I have to tell you straight off the bat. But if that's still the case, then all you need is a four color printer, a very basic CMYK printer. It'll have yellow, magenta, cyan, and black ink. And probably use letter size paper, mostly your plain paper, and a few other types. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully you're into this to produce amazing photographs. That means your images that you created, either on the computer or with a camera, on paper and papers come in many different shades 
of color base, many different degrees of ref reflectivity, many different textures. So they, they add to your image. They add to that impact of your image. And that's going to be the subject of the next video. So let's stop talking about papers at this point. Let's talk about printers. So you got the very basic four color printer. Then you jump up to a more advanced sort of plain paper and photo paper, you know, a sort of do it all type printer. Those will have most of the time six colors. It'll be yellow, magenta, cyan, and black, and then a lighter version of magenta and a lighter version of cyan. Some of them may have a red color added to that mix. Some of them may have a blue color added to that mix. Some of them may even have a gray added to that mix. And all of these help the printer to produce a relatively wide gamut. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. I am not a color engineer, so I have a very basic knowledge of what gamut is. So I will show you some examples of what that might be as it applies to your photography. I'll show you also how to detect if an image that you have either taken directly off your camera or already processed by editing, whether you sort of messed around with it too much and now you have colors that are out of gamut. I'll show you how to check that. I also will show you how to do soft proofing. And what is soft proofing? Soft proofing is sort of a preview of what that print is going to look like. Why do we need to do this? It should match my monitor, right? Well, no. The reason being is that when you view images, you're viewing them through a backlit monitor. That makes that image appear brighter, by brighter, I mean just more brilliant, more pop. Paper, on the other hand, only allows light to land on it and reflect off of it. So the results that you see are never going to match the brilliancy that you originally saw. And if you're inexperienced, this may shock you at first, but you have to accept it. It is a common occurrence. This rendition of me is tons more brilliant that I will appear on paper. Okay, so get over that. <laughs> it's just something I had to get over it. What we are shooting for is color matching. So a red does not appear orange. A red does not appear magenta. Overall, if it's a monochrome print, it doesn't have a tone. It looks neutral throughout from black all the way to white, all along the different tones on that image. It should not have different areas that are a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. You should have a throughout linear representation of that image on paper, on color. You don't want a print that's darker than what you see on your monitor. It will be slightly darker. Yes, that is a fact. That is because of the way that paper reflects light compared to what you see on your monitor. So you need to get it as close as possible. And when you view your printed images, they have to be viewed under a relatively bright viewing condition. What might that be? Oh, visit a photographic gallery and you will be shocked. That does not match at all what your house viewing conditions might be when you put a photo on the wall. That's going to be tons darker than what you are viewing that image in that gallery. Okay, Those are the correct conditions. So, oh, wait a minute, I don't have those conditions. Well, then you have to live with what you get. Your photos are gonna look duller, and I don't mean to make you feel bad. They're gonna look duller than how they appear on your monitor. You need to help those prints by viewing them under a bright enough environment, and that will help increase the brightness, not brightness in density wise, but the luminance of that printed image. All right, let's go over to Photoshop. I'm going to walk you through what you need to do to examine whether your images have any colors that are not going to be able to be printed. And of course, if you have a very high end printer with lots of color channels, that's even better than a four color printer. 
because that printer, something like a Pro 1000 with 12 channels, will be able to handle more colors in that gamut bubble than a simple four color printer. So let's go over to Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. I have the standard image open. I hope you can see me in the lower left corner. We're gonna go ahead and go to view. But before I do that, have a look at this image. You have a black and white in the center. You have some aspen trees in the fall. You have what looks like at the Grand Canyon somewhere in Arizona. And then baby's portraits here and a still life, a set of transitions, darkest to whitest ramp, different shades of densities. You have a sunset, you have some lava flow. And my favorite, of course, is strawberries. And we always comment about the strawberries. They need to look like you want to eat them. All right, let's look at this a little bit closer. What colors do you think in this particular image would not be able to be printed? That would be these right here. These and some of these are just slightly, not slightly, quite a bit out of gamut. And for us to be able to see how this is going to be printed, we have to soft proof it. But let me walk you through what you need to do to check any image that you may have whether you have colors that are out of gamut. Go to View and Gamut Warning. So Shift, Control, Y will take you there. Now look what happened. A lot of my colors went gray. We'll toggle back, Shift, Control, Y. You can see that the sky and the Grand Canyon picture, that's out of gamut. What does that mean exactly? It's not gonna be printed? Oh, no, 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 no. It's going to be printed. It's just not going to match exactly the color that you see on the screen. Look at the aspen trees. Those very bright yellows are changing. You see they are out of gamut. Look at my strawberries. Those dark areas in the shadows of the strawberries, they're out of gamut. Again, that does not mean that you're not going to get a red in that region. Of course you are. It's just not going to be the exact match, matching red. Now, this is the most important thing here. Look at this row of colors gone well, actually no they're not gone they just cannot be printed the way you see them look at the lava flow those dark tones they just cannot be printed the way you see them look at the sunset again this is kind of a torture test but more importantly look at the kids look at the babies nothing nothing is out of gamut as you can see nothing is being affected now let's go over to soft proofing again you go to view in Proof Setup Custom. We're going to choose, let's choose one of my more capable printers, the Pro 1000. So we're going to choose a an ICC profile. Again, my, my favorite, Pro Luster. And we're going to look at how this affects the way that the image, this particular image will be reproduced on paper. Which paper? Pro Luster. So as you can see, I have this little checkbox ticked. We're going to untick it. Now look at everything. This is the way it looks, the way your screen sees it. The way your screen sees it and not the way it will be printed. This is how it's going to be printed. Look at the colors here. This is more likely how they're going to look. In this print that I have here, you should be able to see that very clearly. Look at the top row and those out of colors. That pretty much matches what we have here under soft proofing. Boom, right there like that. That pretty much matches that. So that's a really, really great way to be able to preview what your results are going to be so you're not shocked by what you get. Let's open up a gamut representation. So think of it as like a universe. It's this weird shape. It's kind of an oblong shape like so. You have your red, magenta, cyan, green, yellow. Believe it or not, red light and green light create yellow light. So this is all having to do with light at this point. So Look at the spaces. See this little white line right here? 
that represents this CMYK. So CMYK is what a printing press would use in the printing world. In other words, magazine reproduction, that type of thing. They make a plate that has a yellow channel, a magenta channel, a cyan channel, and a black channel. And the paper is printed over four times, each plate adding the corresponding color. The gamut is not that large. Even sRGB might be a little bit larger in certain areas. sRGB is your smallest gamut that you can actually get. Usually that's what you get when you save an image to JPEG. Why would we want to take our raw image that we shot with our camera and throw away all of this and reduce it to just this area here, sRGB. That's what you do when you shoot in JPEG or export out your edited image to JPEG. So we want to at least use Adobe RGB. Now most monitors may be able to depict all of the colors that live inside this region here. As you can see, the larger the space, the more colors you can include. Now, Pro Photo RGB, not too many monitors can handle that. But again, if you save that, save that image to Pro Photo RGB, even though your monitor may not be able to display the colors, the colors are there. They are not gone. If I take a raw image and open it in my raw editor and then export it to a smaller color space, I literally just threw away all those colors. I, I, I literally did. So the idea is to work in a larger color space so that when you feed that image to your printer, you're feeding the maximum number of colors. Now, whether your printer can handle that or not, that's not our problem. We want to be able to print from an image that has more colors, larger gamut than my printer or any of my printers can handle. Not vice versa. I do not want to send a crippled image to my printer. And my printer says, hey, why didn't you feed me a higher color space image? You see what I mean? So you need to work on a larger color space. And if, if it gets chopped down by the printer, in other words, so be it. But at least you always have the most colors to begin with. Now in the future, hopefully printers will be able to reach this realm right here of the Pro Photo RGB. And again, like I said, I am not an expert in this field. So forgive me for my very simple explanation of what this involves. Let's go back to soft proofing and we're going to check this time whether rendering intents that we choose when we print our images will be a factor on how colors are reproduced. And in this case, we're going to view this image under a different rendering intent. Now, normally I use relative color metric for printing these types of images because I don't want any colors that are in gamut to be shifted. What am I talking about? Let me show you what this looks like under perceptual, which is what most people use. Huge change. Look at that. Everything just, just changed. It's attempting to take colors that are out of gamut and squeeze them. And with total disregard to something very important. Look at my babies right here. Watch what happens to this little baby's face. It just changes. The shadows are too light now. It's becoming too bright. It's shifting colors where they should not be shifted. Okay. So perceptual is good for things like this. Where you don't have important colors. If you're shooting advertisement photographs. And you have logo colors that need to be kept without any shifting. Do not ever use perceptual. Okay. So for normal photography, I always use relative because that's going to allow me to retain any colors that are in gamut. Whatever does not change, that means it's in gamut. Notice the difference. Those babies do not change. They're not being affected. Of course, from the outer perimeter of that gamut bubble, if, if you go back to what I previously showed, it will push those in, but it will not cause these remaining in gamut colors to shift. That is the goal here. We do not want to have our colors that are in gamut shifted because it just needs to make room for the other out of gamut colors, you know, which may not be that important to begin with. You have to analyze each and every image to determine what is important and what is not.
All right, let's stop doing this. We're going to switch over to a image that I found. This one right here and this one here sort of scared me a little bit because I thought, oh my gosh, everything's going to be out of gamut. How do I print this and make it look the way I see it on my screen? Well, let's go ahead before we get carried away. Let's do a gamut warning. Oh, very little areas are actually out of gamut. Some of these dark areas here. You can see them coming in and out. So those purple and deep blue areas, they're going to print. They're just not going to print exactly like what the screen shows. So again, let's now do a soft proofing. And let's do a preview in and out. Wow, not much. Not much change. So with that paper, that particular profile, it really is not being affected by the so-called autogamma colors. As you can see, this is going to print really, really well. Right here, there's a little bit increase in density, in brightness. It's not as deep as the uh, screen shows it to be. But again, I don't really see an issue with this particular image. The next one. Now this one here, I thought, okay, these purple regions here, they're always a problem. They always are. Let's go ahead and do the uh, gamut warning. Yeah, out of gamut. But regardless, let's see if it's really something of an issue. How is it going to print? And this is with, without. So yeah, it does affect that area there a little bit. You can see this is what it's going to print like. And this is what it looks like on your screen. So the biggest problem is right here. You see the density change of this green and this green. This is out of gamut. So it's going to be printed like this. Watch, it just kind of blends, almost blends. It just loses that neon, literally neon looking quality. That's how it's going to print. Now, let me tell you a little bit of a secret. If you're like me, I would never Take a customer and show them what the screen looks like for that particular image. The final result, the final wow, is of course the print always. So you have to take into consideration that these colors, these areas that just simply cannot be printed under that paper profile combination, paper profile printer ink combination. It could be as as involved as that show them the results and the idea is to wow either yourself or your customer and so you never really go back to the monitor to show that oh this neon looking green is not you know did not print as neon like on paper of course it cannot it just simply cannot you would need ultraviolet inks to be able to produce that sort of result let me show you real quick those two images that we just looked at, what we got on the XP15000. And this is with PC inks. And I looked at this earlier and it was a pretty darn good match. This one didn't have a lot of problems printing wise. Uh, really not much was out of gamut. And of course, viewing it through the ICC profile, it actually printed quite nicely. That's why the XP15000 profile keeps popping up because that's what I used earlier. Here's the other image. And this is the area here that was giving us trouble, that purple area. But again, if I just show you this, and I don't go back and show you the image on my screen with those unrealistic neon colors, you would accept this. It does not have a color cast. It's a very good, true rendition of the color balance of that image as it was displayed on my screen. And that's really all you can expect. That's all you should expect from your results. All right, so don't lose any sleep in certain areas of your images because when you look at them closely under soft proofing, you're going to see what the trouble areas would be. And there's not much you can do about it. Actually, you sort of can... You can, under soft proofing, edit your image to make certain areas appear a little bit brighter. And hopefully that will be able to be passed on to your results on paper. We may be able to sort of explore that in the future, but 
again it's just something i really don't do too much because that's actually affecting my original image um, and it's no longer what it originally was we want to maintain the integrity of your original image of course you can make a copy you know that that's that's up to you but there are tricks that you can do to sort of enhance areas that will be affected by a particular paper profile combination in other words how this particular printer will reproduce this particular image and i will leave you with this because there are so many different papers so many different printers out there every printer unless it's a family of printers like the canon image prograph 1000 2100 4100 6100 and the previous 2000 4000 6000 they're all in the same family they're going to output pretty much identically every other unrelated non family printer will output differently a standard image printed on this printer even with color management and that printer even with correct color management is not going to be exactly the same it's going to have a different quality to it and imagine if they were all outputting equally then why would i spend three thousand dollars on a printer when a hundred dollar printer will allow me to get the same level of quality you see what i mean it's like automobiles it's like cameras it's like anything shoes whatever each one has a different level of quality and so even in in the epson family and the canon family every one of these models will output slightly different they all have different ink formulation sure it's yellow magenta cyan and black but not really not really they shift slightly so when the print engine sees these colors they're able to then reproduce colors as accurate as possible but again every yellow pigment ink is not exactly the same chromatic yellow value they shift they're slightly different every magenta is slightly different every cyan is slightly different in a different particular ink formulation for a particular model so get that through your head a lot of people complain that i'm getting slightly different results in this printer i like the results of this printer over that printer that's just the way it is that's just the way it is that's what makes that printer better than this printer let's just say yeah it's very daunting out there that's why it is so difficult to arrive at a proper choice and that is why i do what i do that's why i continue doing this and i'm trying to help you guys arrive at a good choice for photo printing uh, from my experience and when i see something that works then i will publicize it and uh, recommend it the xp 15000 i use that to print those little samples i just showed you it's a very capable printer and it's only six colors again does it compare to a 12 color printer some people may actually say yes yeah some people may actually say yes the only thing that makes that pro 1000 tons better than this one pigment inks yeah and the ability to print larger of course all right that is it for now the next video i'm going to touch on papers their surfaces their colors and how they relate or sort of come together with a particular style of image okay whether it's a marriage made in heaven or a marriage made in you know where okay so that should be interesting i'm going to try to make some prints using my xp 15000 and we'll go ahead and compare the different types of surfaces i have a few different styles of images and we'll go ahead and mix and match and i'll show you the results i'll tell you how to approach paper charts that is of course after you master printing with a canon paper on a canon printer and an epson paper on an epson printer you cannot be buying other papers yet no i'm just kidding now how do you acquire many different samples that's the magic word of different types of paper sample packs so i will walk you through various companies that offer these sample packs ebay is a great place to go sometimes you get these packs for a lot less than you would pay from the actual manufacturer all right that's enough for now 
Happy printing, everybody. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.